بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وآله ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك الله تعالى كما برد في سورة البقرة الطلاق مرتان فإمساكم بمعروف أو تصريح بإحسان إلى آخر الآية رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين Just want to give you one disclaimer we might take few extra minutes today to finish the khutbah because this topic is sensitive and I don't want to give a half message so I will take few extra minutes inshallah alhamdulillah air condition is working fine alhamdulillah so we can afford that alhamdulillah um, divorce rate were extremely high globally speaking pre covid pre pandemic but during pandemic and now in the covid breakups and divorces are on rise and um, just to give you statistics even pre covid the divorce rate in america regardless of faith where 40 50% of uh, the people were getting divorced and obviously muslims didn't take any vaccine that they are immune from the divorce so they are no exception to this and there is no one reason for it but that's not my topic my topic for today is actually the etiquettes of divorce the etiquettes of divorce whether husband gives divorce by the means of talaq whether because in islam islam didn't leave wife powerless islam gave the option of khula to the wife that she can initiate divorce by the means of khula or whether it's a court enforced divorce annulment i won't go into the fiqh of it uh, in this khutbah but whoever is initiating whoever is on the receiving end what are the basic etiquettes some of you will be surprised with this topic why i brought this topic in juma khutbah the muslims we are very good in starting our relationship in a decent way but we do not know how to dissolve our relationship in a decent way and recognizing that this fact that we don't know how to end our relationship in a decent way if you see in the quran you cannot find surah an-nikah chapter of nikah chapter of marriage but you will find in fact surah at-talaq chapter of divorce because we need guidance divine guidance revealed guidance of how to break the relationship how to dissolve the relationship and this is so important subhanallah because as a community member you will hear so many horrible awful things when people are breaking apart when people are divorcing each other the kinds of accusation issues with the child custody is spreading lies about your ex so that he or she can never get married um putting seed of hatred in your child's mind if they are in your custody that your father is an evil man your mother is an evil man not paying your financial dues abusing religion and making it difficult for the spouse to come out of the marriage these are horrible things and unfortunately this is very common in muslim community and yes it's common in american muslim community we face this every single week just as a disclaimer before i can start i'm not trying to desensitize or make it normalize the word divorce by default we should keep this in mind before we can start about etiquettes of divorce by default divorce is haram at least makruh if not haram in regular circumstances in islam marriage is supposed to last forever but when you go into the airplane what do you hear before even plane will take off if plane will crash if emergency landing will happen you need to know these emergency exits right do you doubt the intention of the pilot oh what a jeep is strange pilot is this before even let like, taking off he's threatening about emergency landing no you need to know but hopefully you don't have to exercise that similarly when you are married i sincerely pray to allah subhanahu wa taala none of us have to practice these emergency exits inshallah taala say i mean but but what if you have to you need to know yourself you need to equip yourself how to come out of this relationship what are the etiquettes islam taught us so that we don't repeat the same mistakes what our community members are are doing and before we can talk about the etiquettes i'll give a separate khutbah on this there is a checklist there is a complete checklist we think we think and plan so much for the marriage after 8 months i'm getting engagement after 2 years i'm getting married so much planning for the marriage 
And when it comes to divorce, is spontaneous. At least give same amount of time, if not more, to break the relationship which you started with so much thought process. There is a small checklist which all of us have to go through if you are considering or you are advising your friends and family members before they can, are even, they are, before they are even considering divorcing their spouses. And that's not the topic. Maybe that's a separate topic for separate khutbah, but I'll just go through it. What is, the, what is the checklist? If husband and wife are having any issues in their marital life, if you are taking off, slight turbulence will come. You won't think about crashing the plane, right? You think about sustaining. So the first thing you should do is not think about divorce. First thing about communication. If you have some issue, talk to your spouse. Don't assume that the other person will know this. Talk to her, talk to him that this is bad. This is going in a wrong direction. Communicate. If it's not getting better, then involve wise family and wise friend uh, circle within you and within your spouse so that they can communicate with you. As mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. Involve therapy, counseling, arbitration. If nothing is working and if it keep getting worse, keep getting worse, keep getting worse, then do istikhara. And then, if you want to move forward, then give a divorce according to the Sunni divorce. There's a Bid'i divorce, Innovative divorce, and there's a Sunni divorce. That is one divorce when your wife is not in her monthly cycle and you didn't have a relationship. You see how Sharia makes it a little complicated? All these scholars say it's haram to divorce in her cycle. Why? Sharia wants you to think twice. Don't make it a spontaneous decision. So when you decided, give yourself two, three weeks about thinking about the consequences. And once you do that, then there is three month time period. She will be at your home if you have done it. Unless it's a case of abuse. If you want to reconcile, even if you hug, there's a reconciliation. And if you want to move forward after three months, then there is an alimony, muta which husband have to give to the wife, it's recommended by majority and it's obligatory by Sharfis to give the amount so that wife can sustain herself. This is the Sharia checklist and we can talk separately about in a separate khutbah inshallah. So Sharia wants us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to think twice, at least twice before we can even think about dissolving the marriage. Why divorce is there before we can talk about the etiquettes, inshallah. Just last disclaimer before we can start. Some people might say divorce is really bad. Divorce is harmful. See, the family, the marriage is a form of partnership like any other business partnership. If partnership became too dysfunctional, then it will be the best interest of all the parties, including the children, to dissolve it in a decent way. Instead of physical abuse and domestic violence happening every single day. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his utmost wisdom allowed divorce in this case only. Some people say that divorce is extremely bad. Yes, generally in regular circumstances it is extremely bad. But sometimes you have to select a lesser evil. It is evil but sometimes it may be a lesser of the two evils. And if divorce was haram all the time, as some people think, no, no, divorce is not possible. It's haram all the time. Then it can result in so many evils, domestic violence, infidelity, so on, so forth. So it's better to come out of the toxic relationship after you have tried every possible thing from the checklist. If nothing is working, then come out in a decent way. Instead of thinking what people will gonna say, maza yakulun nas, maza yakulu fulan, lok kya kahenge? Don't think about that. Think about Sharia. Don't harm. Don't do zulm. Let me tell you about the hadith, inshallah. Hadith say in Abu Dawud, that among the permissible thing in the sight of Allah, divorce is the most disgusted thing among the most permissible thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is permissible, but it is the most disliked thing. And we all know in Sahih Muslim that shaitan became really happy when he gets the news that husband and wife are having separation. So shaitan says to another 
shaitan ni'ma anta you did a good job by creating separation so this really makes shaitan happy when husband and wife get separated but if you are thinking about it if nothing is working out as i said then just to make it easy for you that some of the most righteous people on the face of the earth went through divorce including prophet and companions that's mentioned in sahih bukhari and abu daud you would not be the first person and you won't be the last person but remember this is a test how we conduct ourselves during that and with that let's just discuss these four things quickly before i can end inshallah first etiquette first etiquette if you have tried everything nothing is working keep getting worse first thing to remember fa imsakum bi ma'ruf aw tasrihum bi ihsan allah says this in multiple places in the quran keep your spouse with love with dignity or leave them with love with respect and with dignity don't harm them this is a relationship of love and respect don't make it an ego issue many times you will say as a spouse i will show you i will put you into your place you don't know whom you are messing up with don't do that don't do that this is not supposed to be toxic live together with love and respect try everything if it's not possible otherwise leave with dignity and respect and love second etiquette second etiquette is pertaining to child custody hadana hadana our islam talks a lot about that you have to give child custody if it's dissolved in a sharia way according to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mandated and obviously there is an entire fic check your local scholars but if mother is unmarried and kids are young then she will going to get physical custody of kids until certain age unless she don't want to have or there is a potential harm or there is a potential abuse or she marries again then there is a different scenario that will apply and father will keep financial custody after certain age the kids will have an option to go to either of the parties or in some scholars say then after certain age based on the gender they can uh, divide uh, but there are details to it but whoever gets the custody it's not very straightforward whoever gets the custody both the parents have the right to see and talk to the child just remember this if you have child custody you have an amana of allah subhanahu wa taala trust of allah subhanahu wa taala don't abuse this trust don't pollute their mind by saying your father was an evil man your mother was an evil woman don't do that you are abusing the amana and trust which allah subhanahu wa taala have given to you there is a hadith actually say hadith where rasulullah says man farraqa bayna walidatin wa waladiha farraqa allah baynahu wa bayna ahibatihi yawm al qiyamah aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam whoever separates a mother from her child again whoever separates a mother from her child allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will separate him from his loved ones on the day of resurrection allahu akbar and this applies vice versa also so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy and make us all decent when we are concluding and dissolving our marriage amen ya rab third etiquette third etiquette if there are any financial dues which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on you then don't run away don't escape pay those financial dues because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you that responsibility if there is unpaid mahar wedding dues if there is alimony which allah subhanahu wa taala in the sharia have put it, put it on you in the case of khula mahar on the wife whatever the case is you have to pay that dues because allah subhanahu wa taala have asked you and this is decent way in the side of allah subhanahu wa taala there is a hadith actually on this rasulullah says inna a'zama dhunub indallahi rajulun tazawwaja imra'atan falamma qada hajatahu minha talaqaha wa zahaba bi mahriha rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says worst of the sin in the side of allah subhanahu wa taala is that when a man marries a woman just to fulfill his need and once he is done he will divorce her and he would eat all the mahar amount he won't pay mahar this is worse of sin in the side of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a hadith last fourth etiquette and i will conclude with this inshallah this is very important watch your tongue after the divorce watch your tongue there is no point of putting accusation backbiting gossiping going on social media and canceling the other person your ex going to every whatsapp group 
or every house in the community and making it difficult for your ex to breathe is spreading rumors about your ex you are just showing your reality that you are a monster and i don't care whether you are husband or wife whoever is doing you are not supposed to do this you are not supposed to do this have some decency sahabas they dissolve their marriages look at them and the ugliest person will do this in front of their kids pollute their minds you are killing the purpose of the divorce divorce was given so that you can select the lesser evil because there was a bigger harm in the marriage and now you are basically making it bigger harm by polluting your kids mind so you are killing the purpose of divorce when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about divorce in surah talaq and surah al-baqara there are three words repeated in every other ayah which talks about divorce word taqwa open surah talaq you will see taqwa taqwa wa taqullah ittaqullah second is hududullah premises of allah third is ma'roof reasonable why because when we are divorcing each other we forget to be practicing muslim we forget about taqwa we forget about being reasonable towards each other and we forget about the premises and boundaries set by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and preserve our marriages and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is a point of dissolving our marriages then he give us decent way of doing it ameen ya rab just last request i will have with you then announcement and then we can make dua and pray first as a community it's our responsibility to be more mature when we hear these news about divorces you will hear one side of the story and you will say astaghfirullah that was an evil man that was an evil woman did you hear the other side of the story stop acting in an immature way most of the times you are part of the problem if you don't know both the sides just stay quiet staying quiet might give you salvation in the day of judgment but speaking useless things you might be accountable in the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa taala in order to protect individual from zina he gave few things first he gave us guidelines for man woman interaction second he make nikah very easy third he gave us guidelines how to make nikah healthy fourth he make divorce easy if nothing is working out don't be in the toxic relationship and fifth to getting remarried after a divorce is easy also in the sharia what we did we made all these things difficult nikah is difficult divorce is difficult getting remarried after divorce is extremely difficult for women especially hence zina became easy we ask allah subhanahu wa taala to make zina difficult again and to protect our, uh, us and our kids from the zina and to protect our family life and to gather us all with our spouses and our families not only in this dunya with love and respect but even in jannatul firdaus in the company of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma ansur al islam wal muslimin allahumma ghazul man khazal ad-din muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa la taj'al lana ma'hum allahumma la taj'al lana dhanban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farajta wa la dainan illa qadayta wal hajata min hawa'ij ad-dunya wal akhira illa qadaytaha ya arhamar rahimin wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la maytan illa rahimta wa la dhalan illa hadayta ya arhamar rahimin allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'an وعملا صالحا وايمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا ورزقا واسعا ورزقا حلالا طيبا وتوبه نصوحا وتوبه قبل الموت وراحه عند الموت والعفو عند الحساب والفوز بالجنه والنجاه من النار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قره اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما الله